Hello, and welcome to the All Night Gamers Podcast, episode 175. Hi, hello, hi, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the show. Um, or It's going to be a somber episode this week. Uh, I know we don't really do the intro of how you're doing, but I feel like it's pertinent to start with this. The Wii U and 3DS uh, are officially dead. Uh, all online services, except for a small sliver select few, are no longer available. Um, and that was what an hour, like a hour or so before we started recording. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, not too far, not too long ago. Very sad. Um, I think Pokemon Home still works, and you can still re-download any games you've bought on the eShop as of right now. Um, but that's basically about it. Mm-hmm. But anyways, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. It is a somber episode, but but how are we how are we doing this week? Uh, did you guys watch the eclipse today? Dude, didn't oh, get dude, dark I, here. I saw, like, I went out for a couple of minutes, but it basically just looked like a cloud covered the sun. It did not really. It, it didn't even get dark here, dude. It, my friend uh, in Texas no, sent me a really good photo of it. Yeah, I had uh, one of my coworkers uh, traveled to Texas for it and got some pretty nice photos. It was decent. I think it was like 90 plus percent coverage in Huntsville, so um, it was pretty cool. It it basically got to like dusk kind of feeling, yeah, it but it cool, wasn't yeah. super dark. It was just a there, little cooler and a little dark. It is insane how... Uh, so I saw some photos like from over uh, at Magic Kingdom, right? It's insane how it looked over there, considering... It looked completely normal over here. You know, just 20 minutes, 20, mm. 30 minutes away. Yeah. Um, it's really just fascinating how, like, the difference between 100% coverage and, like, 99% coverage. Like, this, the sun is just so bright that even 1% of it keeps it at, like, a dusk level instead of yeah. complete that, darkness. That 1%. Mm makes it yeah but it looked pretty good today we had a little i I hesitate to they called it a watch party at work it was not really a watch party it was the six people that were in office that came outside we sat in the bed of someone's truck and just chilled for like 20 minutes and watched it nice oh wow um yeah no i i I had glasses from several years from like the last one from several years ago i was like let's go (laughs) um the ones they gave us at school (laughs) yeah (laughs) Off. Oh my gosh. I literally <laughs> bought new ones like two days before they said that they were doing a watch party at work and that glasses would be provided. Uh, Ouch. So whatever. I mean, it's only like uh, 10 bucks, so I'm not really sweating, but it was cool. Um, also, it was pretty cloudy up here, so we didn't get to look at it the whole time, but it the clouds did thin up for a lot of it, so we, we got to see some of it. Um, we at least got to see the apex, like when it crossed over us, like two o'clock or something. I kept seeing uh, people kept reposting from the last one we had, where Trump looked at it directly. Yeah, it was. Um, it's it just amazes me how like people all of a sudden think it's okay to look at the sun because it's sort of kind of blocked. Like, no, no, that's how you destroy your eyes. <laughs> yeah, like I did. I did see like the after effect where it feels like it's brighter uh, once the moon gets out of the way. Because I was like, "Oh, wow, that's a that's a bright sun." Obviously, I'm not stupid enough to. Look oh yeah, that's a bright it. sun. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously, I'm not stupid enough to have a look directly at it. But I'm like, that seems brighter than normal. Which. You know, it feels like it's saying something being in Orlando. True. But, you know. The, uh, NASA, I'm pretty sure they, they chased the totality path with, like, some jet planes or something. Um, and I saw a lot of cool footage on the break room TV at work. We had that up. Oh, it was yeah. nice. All the cool NASA images from, like, satellites and stuff. Really yeah, cool. I think that's the only way you can try, uh, chase it. Yeah, well, I mean, if you get in like a the yeah, chasing it is only. I think it covered the entire path that it went in the U.S. in like uh like eighty eight minutes or something like that mm. from like Dang. Maine, northeastern Canada ish to the southern tip of Texas. 
That's yeah. insane. That's impressive. Celestial objects do be large. Um, True. True. Uh... All right. Cool. Well, yeah. So, uh, like I said, we and 3DS are, are officially down. I, uh, oh, yeah. I know when we talked about this last week that it was in upcoming and that I thought there was there had to be like a open source fan made for uh network. I did find one. I wanted to talk about it to spread the word, the word of the Lord. Uh it's called the Pretendo Network. I thought it'd be the Retendo network, but I was I was close. Um so it's sure. called it's called Pretendo. Um you do have to mod your Wii Wii U and or three D S but um it's it's surprisingly easy. It's incredibly easy to do and now that they're shut down, I mean, you know, why not? Uh, and yeah, you can set that up and it, it lets Miiverse work. It lets your friends work. The Your save, cool. like your server data doesn't carry over, obviously. So you, I think you have to make a new account. Um, I haven't really looked too much into it other than just learning about it. And like, I mean, uh. You can still add friends. Like you can make a new account, and your friends can make new accounts. You can still add each other, just like you used to. And it shows like online statuses and stuff. Um, Mario Kart Eight, Mario Kart Seven work. Mario Maker works. Splatoon half works. They're working on that. They have a huge website. You can Google it, and they have a tracker for all of like the major games that people care about having online services for. Which features work and which ones don't. Which ones are in progress. Uh, trackers of complete. They right now they're saying. In total, it's about 72% complete, um, which is pretty impressive. Uh, it's yeah, all just community-driven yeah. and, and open source. Um, the one thing that Splatoon doesn't... Uh, Splatoon doesn't have public matches yet, but you can do... You can go online, you can do private battles, you can connect your Miiverse thing, you can do all that. Um, and they're working on Splatfests, apparently. That's in progress. Ooh. So we'll see what comes oh, of that. If, if I see anything cool come of that in the, in the following months, I will definitely uh, bring that up here, because I'm almost certainly going to try to set that up at some point. Um, Miiverse in 2024 is crazy. Yeah. Um, Nintendo having proper usernames in 2024 is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you're interested in that, look look, look it up. It's uh, really available. They say you can set it up in less than 30 minutes. If you already have a modded system, that is. I guess I say give it an hour to an hour and a half if you need a mod from scratch, but even then that's mm -hmm. you know pretty good. Um Super Mario Maker has officially been defeated, not with a task, but like by somebody actually. That did happen. Um at least I think it, Cooper posted a, a yes. video from Twitter, it looked like it. Um Yeah. So. It actually got beat and uh, so officially every single level was beat before the server server shut well, down. Well there's like so, some weird technicalities on their list, but like, good job on beating uh, the levels. Like, no discredit, but like, there's a lot of levels that they were like, ah, oh, this is definitely made by task or unbeatable. I mean, there are some like glitches because I remember making yeah, glitch some, levels. Yeah, some glitch level things. Yeah. They went, well, this is unbeatable, so it won't count. Yeah, which is fair. Like, there's little, like, there are. I remember making my, I made one like years back. It was literally unbeatable because like, it was using a frame thing. Like, it was frame perfect, but if you got it, you didn't take damage on spikes. So I just made the stage a mile long. And like, if, if you got off the frame perfect thing, you didn't take any damage. Interesting. Yeah. But it, they patched it like immediately after. It was like in the first couple of weeks they had the game open. Which meant all those shit. levels were unbeatable. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, fair, you know, cut out the bad actors, you know. Definitely. Get some BS yeah. out of here. But so. at the same time, I feel like most of those would have been beaten uh, before the update that caused them to be unbeatable. True. Yeah. Still, very impressive feat, though. Like, they basically beat all the legit levels. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is impressive. Yeah, and I'm gl I'm glad it happened. I love I love yeah. seeing community stuff like this. It's always good. So, mm -hmm. um, congratulations to Team Zero Percent, everybody that uh, supported that project. Um, 
Let's see. Speaking of bad actors, the suspect behind the threatening the threatening the uh, Nintendo Live Tokyo 2024 show has uh, been arrested. Don't know his identity yeah. or anything, but he was at least living in Japan. Uh, he is uh, in his 20s and is a local civil servant from the Ibaraki Prefecture. I think that's how you say that. Um, Interesting. Suspect was arrested after sending death threats through Nintendo's inquiry form on its website. Because of repeated threats sent through that form, he's been accused of obstructing the company's business. As of now, it's unclear what his motives were. That's the only charge. Is that the charge? The only one? Obstructing company business by telling a bunch of people that he's going to kill them? <laughs> That's what that charge goes to? Okay. Okay. That doesn't seem... Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's not all of it. He'll, I, but can't wait to see what comes of that. Yeah, we'll see. It um, can't be all of it. Uh, base salary has been increased for a third consecutive term at Konami. Increased starting salary for new graduates is up to three hundred thousand yen. Dang. Which is always that good is news. What is that's about? I guess I don't know if that's. I guess that's monthly. I'd hope it's monthly. Because that's about that's just under two thousand dollars, U.S. dollars. Dang. Um, and I, you know, I, I, the cost of living in Japan probably isn't that crazy high but i highly doubt that you can live in a of year two thousand a year of two thousand dollars a year <laughs> yeah 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 this isn't gonna um well hey you know what konami you do a lot of stupid stuff but glad to see that that stuff is some good news um, we talked about this uh during this past week the uh bafta i what does BAFTA even mean? I forgot already. Uh, the I can't be right. The British Academy Film Awards. Yeah. I don't know. That's I think it is right. something British. Oh, BAFTA Games. So it's the game. It's it's from the the games department of this group, I guess. So anyway, they they put out a list of their most iconic video game characters top 20 list based on a poll of 4,000 people and everything that I we were raging about it when Cameron first posted it and then uh, based on everything Cooper I've seen online it. looking for for news um, oh yeah whoever someone posted yeah. it we all we, co I, we collectively I raged about that it. it was uh, that it was only 4,000 yeah like which 4, made it make a lot more sense like mm -hmm. um, Sackboy being on there Make it all. make sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but everything, I mean, the entire internet seems to have the same feelings that we do. T the TLDR is that Laura Croft was number one, and the consensus between us and also the rest of the internet seems to be like, yeah, she's iconic, but... But not probably be on the list, but not Dude, number one. You're not going to beat more. Mario or Pac-Man. Like, that's just straight Mario, up. Mario, literally. Like, or Pikachu. Or Sonic. They also no, called, Sonic. Well, maybe. They, they also called her um, the first woman of gaming. No. Like, the, the first female <laughs> lead character. Uh, they actually so, removed so that part after out, getting like, dunked on. Like, he yeah, I saw like someone comment that was like, if you don't know character. Samus Aaron from Metroid, then you're disqualified from having an opinion on this list. And someone else was like, uh, actually, Miss Pac-Man? <laughs> <laughs> there, there was you know, a lot of characters listed. What's the just like, game that we made and just branded the exact same with a bow <laughs> instead? <laughs> no, no, okay, to be fair, to be fair, Namco did not make Miss Pac-Man. Midway That's Games true. made Miss Pac-Man. That's true. But yeah, Still, uh, the the list top top twenty: Laura Croft, Mario, Agent Forty Seven, which is Hitman, if you don't know, uh, Sonic, Sackboy, Pac Man, Link, Master Chief, Kratos, Shadowheart, and Aruth Morgan. 
Uh, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Shadow Heart from Baldur's Gate Three. Oh, you. The thanks for your spelling, Cameron. Good job. A <laughs> Ruth Arthur Morgan from RDR Two. <laughs> Pikachu, Steve, Minecraft, uh, Solid Snake, Crash Bandicoot, Cloud Strife, Asterion from Baldur's Gate Three. Kazuma Kiryu from Yazuka. Yakuza. Yazuka. God. Kazuma <laughs> Kiryu. Hey, look, I've never been good at, at, at this, and Cameron's already thrown me off with the Aruth. You guys can't <laughs> tell I'm not locked in. Uh, Ellie well, Williams from The Last of Us, and uh, Nathan Drake from Uncharted. So, yeah, Laura okay. Croft is somehow more popular than Mario or Sonic or Pac-Man or Link or Master Chief. Our also, Kratos... I, forty-seven. Literally, if she was going to be on that list, I would put her be, uh, like 19. Be, like, she would not be near the top. I yeah, would also no. not say Agent 47. Agent 47 would not be fifth. No, he's third. Third. He? He third. He's he would third. not be third. Yeah, Hitman is not more popular than you Sonic. Get, you cannot argue Hitman that. Hitman wouldn't be on this list. So, yeah. There's Hit a chance Hitman <laughs> would be on the list, but okay. like, it depends. Out of 4,000, sure, fine. But like you are not convincing me that Hitman and Sackboy deserve to be anywhere close to the top ten. Sackboy top is only for that matter. popular and well known because he's a freaking meme. He does the stupid like oh face. <laughs> 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 That's the only reason people know who Sackboy is. Like I don't think Yeah, but like you're not <laughs> You you, you ask like convince me that people... uh yeah, exactly. You you ask ten, like 10 people on the street people who is that boy or what game is he from, and they're like they're not gonna know. <laughs> they're not exactly. gonna know, but if you show them the picture, they might be like, "Hey, that's that meme." Yeah, yeah. I you, saw a comment that was like, "I can't believe a Splatoon OC won the list, or was third <laughs> on the list." <laughs> <laughs> they're talking about. <laughs> that's good, and yeah, like I don't want to be the. Nintendo fanboy cuck out here being like, eh, why is it I not would. Mario? Because Mario's but a like, boring answer, and I understand, but you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta, gotta admit, bro, Mar gotta Mario is as big of a cash Mario cow as Mickey Mouse, dude. He's, dude, yeah, yeah. He, he, okay. If it was Pikachu Mario, I would be like, yep, that makes Pikachu sense. Pikachu not making top 10 tells you all you need to know about this list. You gotta forget, yeah. you gotta remember though, Pokemon's the biggest media franchise. It shouldn't just be top ten, it should be at least top three. Top three. Top three. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I don't I don't care how little I care for Pikachu. Pikachu should be top three on of all time popular or uh, yeah. iconic video game list. Yeah. Like, literally, you can and go up to, like, anybody, bro, and they'll know who Pikachu is. The only so, like, thing that I think might make it, like, might make Pikachu fall down the list is because most of Pikachu's fame came from the show, not from a game. But that still doesn't mean that he's not iconic. Yeah. Yeah, like, if you take the idea of, like, go ask somebody random on the street right. and what's the percent chance that they're going to know who they are? Right. Mario, Sonic, Pac-Man, Link, Master Chief, Kratos, Pikachu, Steve. Yeah. Like, those... I mean, And then, like, then you get kind of maybes with Solid Snake and Bandicoot and Cloud. I'm not going to say they're not iconic. That's not my point. My point is if you ask somebody random, that's just a lower chance than the first set. And, like, right. I guarantee if you show somebody a Baldur's Gate 3 character, game. you're losing that bet. <laughs> I lo yeah. Look, I'm not going to... Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year. You can't deny the success of the game. But, but bro, people but don't know those characters them. like that. They just don't. Two of them would not be making it on the top 20 most iconic list without some major bias. Yeah, I would I would bet on, Cla on Crash Bandicoot than I would over a character from Baldur's Gate 3. I would too. Yeah. yeah, and I love Baldur's Gate like, Three. Like, I was gonna say, but that's it's... a super amazing game. But there's no way in hell that you're gonna find someone random on the street who knows, like, a specific character. <laughs> yeah, like it could be good I... characters, but like most iconic of all time, bro. Yeah, that's where it's like. I I asked yeah. um in another uh, gaming group, and uh, one of them was like, "Yeah, no, I would I would put both of them on that list." And uh, her husband came in and was like, "No, neither of them <laughs> deserves to be on this list. They are not 
iconic no. over all these other characters. Yeah, iconic no. doesn't mean is it a good game and you've played it. That no, it means does everybody know who that thing is? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Four thousand people was not enough to determine the most iconic of all time. Yeah, so I don't know what you're smoking over there, BAFTA. I don't know what kind of Laura Craft pack you're smoking, but I'd like some of that. Because that's got to be good. Whatever you're smoking, it's got to be some good stuff. Oh, yeah. British people don't play games. Where's all the FIFA? Oh, oh, dude. Oh, I'm so stupid. British people aren't real. That's why this list is stupid. We forgot that part. British people aren't real, so we shouldn't be taking this list seriously anyway. That is so true. Just like birds, bro. True. And the moon landing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. <laughs> um, okay, well this... I can actually you go ahead. believe Steve would be that low. Not because of Minecraft. I think Minecraft's incredibly popular. I just don't think people know Steve's name. Yeah. I can believe that. Like, they know who he is, but they don't know his name. Or they've at least seen him. Show a picture of him. <laughs> Somebody, and they're just like, oh, it's a Minecraft guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the guy from Fortnite. <laughs> Dude, that's what I was thinking about, like, Kratos and stuff. It's like, <laughs> oh, Fortnite. He's yeah, Fortnite. yeah. yeah. It's, gonna be, it's gonna be, like, the little kids are gonna be like, it's the guy from Fortnite every time. That's the only reason... No, it's that's not. A, <laughs> that's the only reason Little Cross so high is Fortnite. Yeah, probably. There's actually a headline about Fortnite later in the show that might make some extra sense for that. Um, Good. Next up, gamers are seeking a legal win that would stop developers from rendering online games unplayable. Quote, it is an, an, it is an assault on both consumer rights and preservation of media. Uh, so the the this started because uh, Ubisoft pulled the plug on the crew servers, so you can't play it anymore oh, due to yes. server infrastructure and licensing constraints. Um, Interesting. And there's a YouTuber that started this group uh, called Stop Killing Games. Very straight to the point. Uh, his name is Ross Scott. He's on YouTube. Um, he launched a new website, which is Stop Killing Games, to rally opposition to the games industry, quote, assault on both consumer rights and preservation of media. Um, using the crew as its prime example, the campaign directs consumers from around the world to sign petitions and submit complaints to regulatory bodies such as the DGCCRF, which is France's Consumer Protection Agency. Um, so, like, I guess, like, the FCC of France? I don't know. Don't I mean... quote. Don't quote that. If you're going to get uh, I'm pretty sure a country to uh, be able to do anything about it, a uh, European country is a good start. Yeah. And the, then it gets banned in Europe and they can't play <laughs> the uh, The basic legal argument is that video games are goods rather than services, um, regardless of the terminology that game publishers may choose to use, and goods should not be rendered inoperable by the seller after we buy them. I would um, agree with that. But the legal defense is that, you know, they started this forever ago. Today, when you buy a game, you're not buying the game. You're buying a license to use the game uh, yeah. with the main condition that the license can be revoked for any reason at any time. Um, Steam's subscriber agreement is even explicit about this, saying that the games that we buy are, quote, licensed, not sold. Um, yeah, I don't like that. So Physical media. But way. this is the reason that he's going and trying to argue in this is like France or something first, because it'd be a lot harder to get a favorable route, a lot harder. I cannot talk. Uh, it'd be a lot harder to get a favorable judgment in the U.S., but going to France, which has a uh, lot, you know, all really all of Europe has a lot stricter rulings on this and they're more favorable towards the consumer. Um, if they can get a ruling there then it sets a good precedent to then push that argument, you know, to other countries. Um, Scott isn't asking developers to operate game servers until the heat death of the universe, but instead suggesting a compromise. When a developer has decided to stop supporting a game, it should furnish owners with some way to keep playing. 
Usually that be private server support with the understanding that some features may be lost in the transition. Which I think is a way better argument than just say to keep it up forever because that's a really tough ask. But just to like... Agreed. Because like my... What I think of like Gran Turismo 7, when that shuts down, like you're literally not going to be able to boot it up because it requires you to be connected to the internet to even play. So turning that off when everything dies with Gran Turismo 7, I, perfectly acceptable. The online features won't work anymore, but you can still play the game. And maybe you can set up, you know, private matches if you want. Local host. So That's yeah. The only way you can get to play with all the special thousands of GTA cards that are exclusive to only movies. Yeah, what happens when GTA Online dies in 2100? I guess what does it matter? We'll be dead. <laughs> True. True. Um, and lastly, for the opening topics, uh, the Thousand Year Door remaster and uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD for Switch pre-orders are being canceled at Amazon. Uh, so if you have pre-orders there, you might want to check up on that. Um, do we know why they're being canceled? I know this was like hot off the press right before we started recording. Uh, let's see. Oh, bro, the dogs are upset that they're canceling pre-orders. That's fair. I would be too. <laughs> Apparently, it's only for physical copies, not digital copies. Um, neither physical nor digital is available to purchase. At the time of this post, it is unclear why this is happening. Um, yeah. Nobody has said otherwise that their order still stands. No, everyone who's checked says that their order was canceled. Very unfortunate. Yeah. The reason given was, quote, stock no longer available from distributors. So either Amazon did not secure enough physical inventory, although the why they wouldn't do that of two major first party Nintendo releases is weird. Or uh, yeah. option B, Nintendo is not giving any stock or any more stock to Amazon, which is for for some reason like again why but logically those are the Very only two different. things that we can assume right now um let's see yeah um so i guess if you want that pre-order from somewhere else um okay on to collector's corner the weekly segment where we talk about the games we've been playing and the games we've been buying and basically everything else we've been doing because why not uh i got oh, yeah. the i was already ready on spin the wheel i had the wheel up and running so let's spin it and see what we got <laughs> <laughs> uh man he's so excited happy. about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right cooper you're up first w bro all right, so I've been playing some. I've been playing some games. I've been I playing. Would hope so. Ma Mandy agrees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I've been playing. Oh, oh yeah. I played some golf of friends. I played some <laughs> Fortnite. I played. Um. I played the game of the week. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, and then I also, with Grant, I was able to play Splatoon one. I played a couple. I played a little bit of Mario Kart, a little bit of uh, Splatoon. I played a good bit of Mario Maker, but I was able to play some. Uh, it was really fun playing Splatoon with Grant. Yeah, we that was a, good. We got a dub, which was nice. We got a few dubs. We did. Nice. The one thing I dislike about Splatoon 1 is definitely like not being able to be on the same team every time. Yeah, the, the, oh, friend, yeah. the friend matchmaking in Splatoon 1 is a garbage infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, but they also kept that in Splatoon 2. Did they really? They did. Yeah, they did keep that in Splatoon 2. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying Splatoon 2 is any better, 
Yeah, no. I'm, both of them are equally at fault, but uh, that infrastructure is garbage. Yeah, so it's going to was the only one. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it was fun. We got we got a good amount of dubs. Um, what else? And yeah, uh, no Miku, no Miku games this week. No Miku games this week. Oh, no. we're wow. stuck I've exercising been, with Miku. I've been, I've been <laughs> busy, bro. Because it's either it's been like classes and work, man. That's not been fun. Cooper yeah, finally getting, understands the pain. Everything's getting thrown at me at the last second because it's like the last month of the semester. Oh yeah, Miku end of the semester. <laughs> no Miku's awesome, bro. I wish I could play more, but. Oh my god, no. Uh, <laughs> literally guys, we've lost, lost him. He's he's gone. Oh, Kyle, Zach, what do you mean we lost him? He's been do. lost. It's how we react to whatever they yeah, bring up on. Fortnite. <laughs> What's up? What's about? That's how we how react how Kyle... to bring up Fortnite. Yeah, how Kyle's reacting to you playing me too is how we react to when you <laughs> Dude, I don't do that, honestly. I don't I don't even know what you're talking about. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, more or less has been church chilling, but like yeah, no. Everything like last month of the semester, not fun. Yeah, I I remember those days not fondly. So mm -mm. very much a struggle. Mm -hmm. All right, well uh Kyle, you're up next. Nice. Well, um I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring. I did not play the game of the week because i'm a little stinky boy i don't know i just didn't i couldn't get the okay and so um but i've been playing a lot of elden ring I've been playing no that's pretty much it i don't know i've been like hey man sometimes you get in a binge that's okay i've been hyper i've been hyper dedicated to yeah. uh getting every single ending i'm at Four out of six right now on the endings that I can get. And Benjas catch catch the yep. best of us, man. As someone who has somewhere between three and four hundred hours in Stardew Valley, I, I I can't judge you for just playing one thing all week. Yep. <laughs> Kinda how it's been. I just I've been playing this. Well, all right. That really was cool cosmetic items. That was easy. Spin the wheel. Alex, you're up. Okay. Cameron and I played Winnie the Pooh, Rumbly Tumbly, and then <laughs> How was that? <laughs> what is Winnie can we get? A, can, we, can we get? A, yeah, can we get a review? What What game is this for? So this is for the GameCube. It's the game that Alex bought while we were uh, at the wedding for the wedding. Jesus Christ. Winnie the Pooh Rumbly Tumbly Adventure. <laughs> so we dumb. beat it. Oh boy, and it took us four hours. Uh it was it was terrible. Some of the controls felt like they weren't finished. Mm. Like I'm I, shocked. You play Pooh Bear and <laughs> we kept getting stuck. Uh by like the control would just stop taking the input. Sick. They would just stop. And you were being chased by half the left of woozles during those time. So they would obviously catch you. Ooh. And then it would reset you somewhere random on, in that uh, area. It was the longest three hours I've had playing a game in a while. You know, as much as we talk about like good games and bad games, it's it's really important to play an actually bad game once in a while to so remember that, that games that you don't think are good aren't really that bad of a game. They're just not your thing. There's a difference between bad games because you don't like them and bad games because they literally don't function. <laughs> it's it's good. It's not great. It's uh it's humbling. You know, bring your back self, ground yourself about yep. what's good and what's bad. I mean, it's like a solid it, four or five, because like one or two means it's not running at all, or one's not running at all. 
it's a license. And two game. would be like Sonic 06. <laughs> yeah, it or like functions. Ride to Hell Re- Retribution. Yeah. It functions. Not well, but it functions. Pooh Bear was. It functioned. It was. Yeah, I think a I think a five is a fine beatable. review given that it's a kids game. So the expect like the ceiling is pretty low. Yeah. Uh, Does it? Will it infuriate the kid? Absolutely, no question asked. No, because they could play easy mode. We well, played they, the real one. Uh, there was a junior there mode. Wasn't, there was an easy mode. Explain That's to me why kids game actually. needs an uh, easy mode. Yeah, shouldn't the whole game just be easy? It's a kids game. Why is there a easy mode? No, I don't know. Like to play the regular game, you go to the middle section. But if you want to play easy mode, it's over here in the corner. And we're just like, okay. Hmm. Very weird. Very All right. very weird. Um, um, golf with friends, obviously. True. Which basketball sucks. No, it's well, pretty bro. I think that's... bro. No, no, your laptop is just a a choke heap, dude. That's that's <laughs> I I. Ba- look, basketball can I, be I infuriating. You weren't the only one that was upset during that match, but no, dude, I, I like basketball. I like I basketball like fully because it makes people upset, including me. Especially since I was the only one below par at the end, I'm kind of goaded. <laughs> Hockey's fun, but not on hole in one mode. Yeah, it has to be on one of the base maps, I think. Yeah. Where it yeah. actually is designed for it. The I've done shapes one... before, but I don't remember. I know y'all played it. I've done it before. I don't remember. It's just weird how the ball goes, right? Because of how the... It's we like acorn angular. Dude. Acorn is awesome. Yeah, acorn basically is like, you're not beating this hole. Yeah. Gotcha. Dude. Especially because um, uh, we were doing the Halloween map. And we got, uh, oh, you aren't be yeah. Yeah, we no, couldn't go. You, you can't not. go up ramps or anything. <laughs> no, yeah, it's awful. Was it was you was can... it Acorn or Christmas Ball that we got on the map that you have to hit the ramp or hit Acorn the, uh, target trampoline? It was Acorn. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah. Did everybody get Acorn on that map? Yeah, so we so set it up to where everybody got. Shape. Yeah. Oh, that's atrocious. That, Why would y'all well, do that? Well, the only, like, so we wanted to do something stupid, like, because we were just, you know, intentional There's suffering. And pulling, yeah. it's a lot easier, it's a lot less of a nightmare when you do everybody gets the same bad shape, so you all suffer together instead of each person gets a different One, random shape. Someone gets a really good shape. Yeah, someone's just going to get the golf ball. Yeah. And someone gets acorn. Yeah. So the person with golf balls, like, look, I did it, and everybody else. Uh, teams is fun, though. I really like teams. I, really like I think teams, we should shuffle the teams more house. often, though. How do teams work? Uh, so you can either, I mean, it's ultra configurable. You can, everybody can be on their own team as much as they want, basically a free for all. But um, you. What we did is I used the same spin the wheel thingy that we use for for this segment. I put everybody's yeah. names in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first two people that got drawn were team captains, so they got to pick the team name. It's like a there's like twelve different team names you can choose. They're just random things, and they all have a symbol with them. And then from there right. we'd spin the wheel, and it would go team one, team two, team one, team two, in just order of being drawn. Um, and we played like that, and uh. Cameron and I's team trounced the other guys who shall not be named. Uh, All right, buddy. All right, buddy. We beat it. We beat them by like one or two the first round, and they're like, "Ah, no, nah, run it back, run it back." And we trounced them by like ten or nine. Oh, no. Got smacked down. The first round was fair enough, but like the second one. Oof. Oh yeah, you can also like you can also gap. change the the scoring, so it can either be uh, team average or uh, best player score, or um, I think like the difference in par, uh, like traditional yeah. golf uh, scoring. We did team average, yeah. and team since average it was five, it, we had ten people, so it was five people to a team, and so if three people got the same score, it would be that score. Uh, it was always rounded down. 
so it was a really close thing the first round because most of like we'd always get one or two someone would always screw up on each team but since it was a rounded down average it usually didn't change anything multiple people had to screw up right. in order to get a and then we played thing. Candyland, and Candyland is uh, kind of difficult. That's awful. Uh, I think I've played Candyland before. Other Alex has like some disease where he just can't get up that like rainbow candy ramp to the left. He always chokes on that hole. I don't know why. Yeah. He just he just can't do it. I was also choking on that hole. Well, if oh, just, Haunted would have like, been. He has some disease where he can't get up. I was just going to be like, <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> old man, old man. Haunted would have been fun since everybody always, someone always gets like a glitch that prevents. Yeah, someone always gets screwed <laughs> on that one. Oh, yeah. Things uh, that won't get patched because they have nothing. They make a lot of money without patching it. Uh, I played a bit of Tales of Ares. I beat the first fight in the DLC I bought like two years ago where you fight Kirito and Asuna from Sword Art. And then the second fight was like, are you level 99? And I was like, no. So obviously I did not do the second fight. Um, Paper Mario 64 was the one that I remembered that I had played. Okay. Uh, I made it to desert, and then I haven't really moved on from there because nice. I need to grind out levels, I guess. At least a few. I need to hurry up and finish Paper Mario 64. I'm like five or six stars in. I need to hurry up and finish that game. Yeah, beat it before Thousand Year Door Remake comes out. Uh, I mean, I'm probably not going to pick that up on day one, but ideally... Uh, and then the game I played most is Persona 3 Reload, where I was like, ah, there's a reward for beating the game on the highest difficulty. I can do that, no problem. Yeah, a couple of my friends have been playing the mess out of Persona recently. I get all they'll it's, talk about. It's just, the hardest difficulty I don't think is really that hard. It's just a lot more grinding. So I'm like, is this really worth it? Right. Sure. So far, I've stayed on it but I don't know. it's fine I'm enjoying the game I'm just like do I want to spend all this time grinding out to get the Perfect. little thing you get for beating it on that day yeah I, I, what I, you I hard... could have done you good sorry yeah. Technically, what you could have done was just New Game Plus it after doing a No, run. you can actually not. If you click Merciless on New Game Plus, it resets all your stats. Oh. Pain. All right, what were you saying, Grant? Um, if the difficulty increase is just you have to grind more levels, that's BS. If the difficulty yeah. is like you need to grind a pinch more... Because the AI in the battles is smarter and will make better decisions and is a little well, bit stronger. Well, the AI is smarter. That's the thing. But like you, yeah. Do... But if the, if that equates to you have to grind a ton of levels now just to beat it, then like, what are we doing? Why the uh, enemies do like one point four times damage, but you do like one point or zero point seven or zero point eight something like that. But they'll use. If they have it, they'll use your party member's weaknesses on this level of difficulty, mm. and they will go for the knockdowns, and they will go for the kill. Yeah. I think so at least at the beginning of the game, it's pretty difficult because they can do all that. True. I think Alex I, I asked me some questions about uh, Paper Mario 64 recently. And it's kind of like the same issue where you kind of you do kind of grind a little bit just because AI gets really hard to where it does like a lot of damage. Yeah, sixty four is problem is they do a lot of damage. But, uh, Persona three reload is the fact they have the weaknesses and they use them properly uh, instead of just targeting the main character. Yeah. Also, knock out my party members. Oh yeah. 
Also a 64, Alex just has a skill issue and can't time the dodges. <laughs> Rude, but you just had to out, bro. <laughs> not gonna blame not gonna blame you, Alex. I have a little bit of skill issue with those dodge timings too. The I, I can I time never... the offense easily, but the defense timing is I'm I'm not great at that. Mm. The defense I just don't it's fully get. Just it. different. 64 is I, like thousand year problem. doors. I don't remember really having a problem with it. But for some reason, 64s I have a lot. Yeah, they ask. Their their the timing window is is very strict. Definitely. Oh, no, no. All right, spin the wheel. It's gonna be me or Cameron. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Cameron by a sliver. All right, Cameron, you're up. Nice. All right, so uh, the fourth by Coastal Adventures pin came out. Um, it is Tiki Room. Um, it is also backwards. So Disneyland or the Disneyland flag has me for real. Uh, has the Walt Disney World uh, tiki room and Disney World has the Disneyland tiki room. Interesting. So uh, yeah, and that's on all of them. So it's not just, you know, mine. It's just that's just how somebody that was not paying attention when they printed that. Ask me as soon as as soon as you uh, showed that. Is obviously, uh, Splatoon three. I uh, got back into the grind. The pen. Huh? Oh, do you? Uh, the yeah. When you showed that pen thing, the first thing that popped in my mind was Squidward's Tiki Land, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh yeah, like that. wait, no, that's that's totally unrelated. Uh, just me being stupid. Carry on." <laughs> nice. Um. So yeah, obviously I did Splatoon three. Did uh, got back into the DLC a little bit, earned some more badges. Uh, mostly done. I just need to buy all the items. I was one. Uh, I remember what the currency is called. Whatever the currency. I was one thing of currency away from buying the most expensive item. So I was like, oh. Cool, fun. Hmm. Uh, and then, obviously, I also played with Alex with uh, the Pooh Bear game, Pooh Bear's Rumbly Tumbly Adventure. Um, it required us, the last level, because I have a photo of this, required that we find all the honey pots to be able to finish the level. None of the other levels required that. It was not fun. Like, I don't feel like we appreciate how low wait times are between load time, like the like the load times now, until you go back and play a game where it is unoptimized as hell. Uh, yeah, oh my, my patient kid self would not be able to handle going and getting every single damn honey <clears throat> pot. I would have just uninstalled, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, that's enough Winnie the Pooh for now. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Do. Oh. Do it. If you that's want right. to know bad load times, you need to get a console from the last generation, so Xbox One or PS4, and play something that was t- definitely designed to be run from an SSD. <laughs> yeah. Forza Horizon uh, 4 on Xbox One literally takes like five mm-hmm. minutes to load, I think, when you boot up the game. Ooh. Play that's... Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. Areas are just massive. You can play it on Switch and have an even worse experience. True. Um, let's mm-hmm. see. So yeah. since I couldn't get um to you know, because I was doing that bingo uh game last week to get uh Paper Mario. Um since I couldn't get the Mario Party game that was based on luck to show up in Mario Party 2. I had to pull out everybody once you switch and play bingo to win bingo. Dude, one, two, uh, switch. Ass. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the sequel. Oof. Everybody one, two, switch. Yeah, not everybody one, two, one, switch, two switch, but switch. everybody one, two, switch. You know, the worst one. Yep. Um, Alex and I also played Smash Ultimate uh, because one of the challenges was when a round of Smash Bros 
at zero percent. Um, I forgot we played Smash. Yeah, we we play Smash. Uh, win it, win around a Smash Bros. While your stock is at zero percent. Dang. And I'm just like, here, Alex. Can you throw this round for me real quick? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you, you, one of one of the stipulations was it could not be thrown. You mm. couldn't, you know, it had to actually try. Yeah, Alex had a lot of frustration after playing Pooh Bear. So every time we'd get close, he'd just be like, uh, you know, even if it wasn't intentional, he'd hit me and we'd have to do another round. <laughs> <laughs> it, like he grabbed the ledge of Sephiroth. Alex. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> and there was a round where he grabbed the ledge of Sephiroth and for whatever reason, the hitbox decided it connected with, uh, I think I was playing Sora at that time. Um, so it connected with Sora. I'm just like, you grab the ledge. Why do you get to hit me and grab the ledge? <laughs> um, but we finally got it. I was like, good enough. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, oh, I played Mario Party 2. Um, fun fact, you can turn off the hidden stars. Like the hidden blocks and the bonus stars. So huh. didn't have to deal with that. Because one one of the challenges was when Mario Party or uh, Pummel Party, if you you know didn't have a Mario Party available with zero stars. Yeah, yeah the Pummel Party people uh, was after the rules were set in place, but they're like, yeah, no, we only did ten rounds. I'm like, I had a minimum of twenty because it's the <laughs> only Mario Party I have access to <laughs> that I can turn off the stars. Because Alex was like, you you could go buy the new Mario Party on Switch and be able to, you know, if you get it, buy a game, get a game. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want to have to do that. But, you know, I did pull it off. I was playing all four characters. It was awesome. And by awesome, I mean completely and utterly tedious. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> um, let's see. So I also did three... So one of the challenges was die three times, like get three games and overs in one minute. So oh, I did uh, 3D World, Mario 1, and Mario Land, uh, Land on the GBA. Nice. Or GB. Um, mm. I also had to do some Among Us. I, had, I did not actually play Among Us. It just sort of, because uh, Chelsea got me for some help and i ended up just timing out and it counted hmm. as a victory so i'm like that's eh, great um Whatever works. i also did a, a little fishing in fire emblem three houses hmm. all so, right lot, lots and lots of games yeah i was gonna say i thought i was i was expecting my uh collector's corner to be around the world in 80 days but i've been shown up you guys have been all over the place <laughs> a little bit a little bit oh yeah uh, sorry I'll go back to like the poor optimization. Like mm -hmm. when we were playing Splatoon One, bro, I I didn't realize it when I ever first started playing the game. But like going back, there are so many frame drops, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Wii U uh, is definitely doing Wii U also, things. That oh, might yeah. also just be the Wii U choking because of all the dust accumulated from the last nine years. True. I mean, mine's clean, and it was also frame dropping pretty heavily. I think that's just uh, the Wii U doing not. Wii U things. Fair, fair. Um, yeah, it was not good. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. all right, I'll uh, round us off here. Um, so, I um, first I'm working on this Raspberry Pi 4B that my uh that that Jules uh brother gave to me at christmas it was one that he had and just didn't really ever use um, it comes with this like nice little case and everything the only time i've ever messed with the raspberry pi was the three and this one has like micro hdmis which also i didn't know that was a thing um so i'm waiting on a amazon package to come tomorrow with a micro hdmi adapter and a new sd card and a little tiny fan to put in here i don't know fully what i'm going to do with this yet i know on pi 3 i set up uh I can't what they call it like pi box or something or uh, it's basically like a emulator collection with its own ui and built-in user 
apps thing. Like you can scroll through all the different systems and set up stuff. Um, and this is the generation after that. So uh, it should work pretty well. I, I think the main thing I want to try to do is DOS box. I really would like to have a clean cut way to play old school big box DOS PC games. Cause that's something I've never really played. Uh, and I want to know what it's all about. And long-term goal is to have like a windows 98 PC that's stacked up to, so I can play DOS stuff. And I can also play stuff from like the late nineties and early two thousands. Um, that'd be really fun to have. Um, but for now this will do. So, uh, stay tuned for how that turns out. Um, I've been playing a bunch of my 3DS. My 3DS has gotten more love for me in the past two or three weeks than it has in the past several years. Um, I've been nice. playing Pokemon White. Um, I'm about to battle the second gym. Um, I've played a lot of Ocarina of Time 3D. Uh, I've got all three spiritual stones and I just turned to an adult for the first time. That's, that's where I am there. Um, some Club Nintendo Picross. Uh, that was on the H shop. So Ooh, got that. It's nice. it's pretty cute. It's, I mean, it's a as far as Picross goes, it's pretty lame, but it's quirky because you know, cool Club Nintendo thing. Um, and I played some Mario Kart Seven online. Uh, see what that remember what that was like before that got shut down. Um, I. Played Splatoon with Cooper. Uh, True. I we played. I wanted to bring this up. There was this dude, Michael. I think it was his name. If oh you're out God, there, Michael, Michael, you're trash. You're garbage. <laughs> uh, dude, Cooper literally beat me more than he should because I kept getting Michael on my team, and dude had a roller and could barely get above 400 points a lot of the time. It was dude, making no, me Michael so just getting so heated. Michael's trash, dude. He, he's, he's like choking my team out. Let's like, give every Grant time... the Michael roll. <laughs> like every time, like okay. we swap, bro. Like we went into a new match and he swapped teams. So we're like, all right, three v four. <laughs> uh, one time it was literally me and three rollers. Dude, hey, yeah. Play yeah. Splatoon with me. I'll be your Michael. <laughs> no, I don't need. I don't need that <laughs> no. in my life. I almost oh, won yeah. one time with him on my team. We almost won one time, but not quite. <laughs> yeah, um, one time, I was chasing Grant down the hill and i was like i'm behind you, I'm behind you. <laughs> yeah uh on i i think it's the no it's not the skateboard park it's the one with the treadmills uh and oh, the gym thing i don't i can't remember what it was it was an outdoor map and there was like treadmills on it and you could cover all the treadmills as part of the ink but it like kept spinning around so you'd have to spray all of it uh and like some move down and some move up they give you access to like side areas and I was going down the one on the enemy side because Cooper was on the other team. I inked and I went down and Cooper was like, I'm coming up behind you. I'm coming up behind you. And I just turned around and went Bleh! and just blasted him instantly. And we just laughed for like the entire rest of the match about that. Like, you, why'd you tell me you were going up behind me? He had me. I had no idea. I was just going to keep spraying ink down there. He could have zoomed up on that treadmill right behind me. He's like, I'm coming behind you. Come behind you. Uh, that was funny. Um, Cooper doesn't always think through what he does before he does. It. True, but it was hilarious. It was it was good comedic it was effect. Hilarious. Um, uh, good, yeah. And uh, obviously more Stardew Valley. Uh, I'm so close on the community center. I need like like five or six items to complete it. You're I'm in midway of fall. Your... Yeah, the 1.6 okay. run. Um, I also let's see. I got the. Yeah, I'm like five or six times away for that. I did the Grange display. I almost did the purple shorts one, but I realized that uh, you actually get one of the star drops and also a rare crow from that thing. And also now prize tickets in the 1.6 update from uh, the fair. So I did want to disqualify myself the first year by putting the purple shorts in there because I wanted to go ahead and get that stuff out of the way. But next year, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, and I also found out that the... the the main reason that mouse and keyboard is way better than controller for Stardew Valley is mini games, because I didn't think about it for forever. But going back and playing those mini games to get the star points, the um, slingshot mini game where you just shoot targets is so stupid easy with a mouse 
and is so <laughs> stupid hard with a controller. I never liked that video game before, mini game before, just because I always played it on Switch. And now I go back and remember what it was like on mouse and keyboard, and I was able to get all the stars I needed to buy the star drop and the crow and the prize ticket all from that thing by just doing runs of that, crushing it every time. It was so easy. Uh, yeah, so. where on the Switch it's easier that just to do the Yeah, that one is a very easy mini game. <laughs> Because I've never played on anything but M and K, so I was like, "This is great." <laughs> yeah, um, I was gonna do the the betting wheel mini game just because that's what I was used to because of the Switch. But then I played that and I did really good. And if you get a hundred percent accuracy, you get like a four times multiplier and five hundred star tokens every time. So it was really easy to just play that like six or seven times and get four thousand things. Um, so yeah, I played more of that. Oh, and I uh, here let me. Unplug that for a second. Built a new keyboard. From This is my uh, Chinesium AliExpress keyboard. It looks really cool, and it sounds super nice. I don't know. That probably won't pick up on the on the mic. But no, uh, it, up a bit. Um, it, it looks great. But don't get me wrong. This is cheap. This is very cheap. It types great. This is actually going to be my new keyboard for this desk. I'm going to use my, my bigger keyboard for work because that one has a, keypad, or a numpad on the numpad. side. And I use that at work way more than I do here. Also, this one has a volume knob, and that one doesn't. And the volume knob is incredibly useful. Um, mm -hmm. It can do Bluetooth or wired, or it has a 2.4G dongle, um, rechargeable battery, USB-C. And again, it is cheap, but for $45, this is an incredible keyboard. This is better than like Razer keyboard you can buy in terms of the feel of it. But uh, yeah, it is cheap. You can twist it like it's uh, jelly, almost. It... I couldn't get the the switches in the board because I had to, like the plastic flex so much that the clips wouldn't go in. I had to pry up the board with a pry tool just to get the switches to clip in, and I tore the hell out of my thumbs doing it. But now that it's built, it's great. Uh, so that's that was my most recent project. Let's go. Um. So yeah, that's I think that's all I had. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um. So, on to uh, the download station of the week. So, this week, uh, we did the lazy option and chose to play F-Zero Maximum Velocity as a single-player run just to review and talk about. Um, that is, is just came out on uh, NSO. Um, I definitely have words about this game, but you guys uh, were so vocal about having things to say that I kind of want to hear what y'all have to say. So, so uh, F-Zero Maximum Velocity, what, what are the thoughts? How are we feeling? I didn't like it, but I'm not really a big fan of FCR yet. Alex and I did co-op for it. We did do so. Setting up co-op is a bitch for some reason. Of course it is. Um, of course it is. Yeah. Thanks, Nintendo. Because um, we had... We, we tried multiple times to do it online. And I think for whatever... Causing the problem. Yeah, for whatever reason, my Switch was just like, no. Get, they connected to the room. What do we do? <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> Shut it down. So, yeah, we didn't get to do it online, but we did it locally. Uh, <laughs> I did not understand the controls. It's and 80. then I, I know, but like I didn't understand how to get around the walls. I kept hitting the walls, so I played oh, through too. most of the. The Pawn Beginner Grand Prix. I did not finish. I made it through the first no, four, no problem. I did not finish round five. Literally, dude, I was I kept hitting the walls and I got mad. I was like Stark Farm, which is like the second world you go to, mm -hmm. or the second map you go to. I quit. I was like, no, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we all, the three of us had a very similar experience. But yeah, why is the hot violet so broken, bro? I used the fire one at first because like, oh, fire, it's got to go fast. No, it's slow as hell. And I used <laughs> hot violet. That thing literally outsped. I literally lapped the whole race the whole time. I was like, what the hell? It's broken. But you hit walls. Yeah, so my assessment is that it's like the OG F-Zero, but floatier, which is bad. Like, I felt like even on the 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 violet car like the the standard car it like the other cars absolutely screw that the windwalker i could not drive at all 
Uh, so I tr- I tried all three of them. The the fire car it is fast, but the problem with that is that it accelerates through its entire curve. So you when you slow down, you don't get a quick acceleration back to your top speed. You get a higher top speed, but the acceleration takes forever. So you really have to maintain that speed, or else you pay a huge penalty for it. And when the game's floaty and you're constantly swinging around and hitting walls and stuff, it doesn't work out. So the the standard car works fine, but it's like requires such a perfect balance of drift, brake, and acceleration all at the same time that I don't understand why it's that way when the platform it's on is the Game Boy Advance because mm-hmm. the Game Boy Advance is does not lean itself well to clawing all those buttons like that and and rocking back and forth um and like yeah. I don't know the the one on like, it feels like just the SNES version of F0 which is a really good game. I like that one a lot. Oh yeah. And I'm no I'm not you know, goaded at F zero by any means. I'm decent, but that's a you know, hard decent. Uh, it it just so it's so floaty and yeah. perfectionist that maybe I'm just bad. Maybe that's what it is. We're just bad, and we don't know how it's good it can be. Fair. Like it's serviceable, but why is it so complex of a play style on a portable device? Uh, like, I, dude, that's that's something I didn't even consider because I'm like, you know, I'm playing it on fifty whatever inch screen, but the game yeah. So you gotta like, yeah. Imagine yourself clawing your hands on a GBA and then trying to do that left, right, left, right drift, brake, gas thing like uh, through every corner, and it's it's easy to do once, but you have to do it consecutively, really, really quickly because that's the whole thing of F Zero is that it's lightning fast. So like. I'm not that. It's not that I hate that it's a difficult game. I don't understand why that's on the GBA. Yeah, because yeah, I feel like, yeah, no, because I feel like the original F Zero, because I bought it on the 3DS years back. I feel like that flowed so much better. Like I feel like it could break around corners and be fine. Yeah, there's there's one car in F Zero for SNES that's floaty like that, but it provides like you know there's there's you get rewarded for dealing with that like any other car there's you know there's good things and bad things but in all of them like even the base one i mean it was the least floaty of them all but dang man like i couldn't keep myself from from swinging around and like and you can't i i would try to break and drift early to try to get around the turns and it just that's not worth it because now you're slowing down a bunch and everybody just zooms past you mm-hmm. um and in a game Dude. where you get knocked out if you're not at a certain spot by the next lap you know it's it's pretty dang. killer but then, like, uh, you know, you're doing fine, you know, say you're in third on the final lap, and then you hit a wall, and your car goes, oh, no, you're you're on low power. And the people zoom past you, and I'm like, where the fuck did you come from? You're supposed to be out of the game! <laughs> yeah, and for somehow the, the NPCs that start spawning in there as, like, obstacles are way more frustrating than they are in the SNES version. And that might just be because of the controls. Like, it's harder to avoid them because you float everywhere, but the if, they felt way more frustrating. Lose, the amount of speed mm-hmm. you lose hitting anybody is insane. Like, and maybe part of that is because I'm used to uh, F-099 where I can, you know, hit people and it not affect me. But like, yeah, I mean, like the hitting things and slowing down, that's just a part of the game because you're trying to maintain high speed and stuff. It's just the difficulty to do it on this one is a lot harder. Like, why is it why is it the way it is for a GBA game? If anything, it should be easier. It's supposed to be smaller and bite sized and easily, you know, playable because that's the whole point. Okay, it's you know, with. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, it felt like it should have been on a console just because of how like large some of those levels got, especially no, as you got further into the level game. Base. It really should not have been level based, but even like, the still fact that they were level based and some of those levels were 30, 40, you know, maybe an hour. It same idea with uh, the sub zero, right? Where it's like, you know, if you're playing the game on a GBA, you know, on a trip or something, you're having to do five rounds in a row. 
perfect. Yeah, and at least like the 3DS has sleep mode. Like you can just close it and open it back up later, but you you can't do that on the GBA. No. No, at best you can pause it. But yeah, yeah I don't what? think and that like, that I don't know if that was one of the games that had the I don't think it was. There were some GBA games that had a built-in sleep you could select the sleep thing. Uh in game and then like enter a key combination to open it back up but i don't think that one happened. yeah i think yeah it's it's just not and like it's like they wanted it on the gba because the gba was popular but they were like oh, let's keep it console level that's fine well they had an f-zero game on the gamecube at the same yeah. time is it uh f-zero gx which worked with f-zero ax um yeah and honestly the thing is like even if it is going to be that difficult why is it that difficult in pawn mode like if you're in king class i'm not going to complain about the difficulty because at at that point you should kind of be expecting it and also if you get to that point you're good enough at the other ones to where you can tackle the challenge but why we're on pawn pawn mode dog beginner yeah beginner i should not be having i should not have crashed like crashed out at all in pawn mode but they're like, oh, you you made it to round five. Uh, here's a bunch of sharp turns all together. Yeah. Like, it's, it's rough. Poorly, very poorly designed for the GBA, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't... Uh, but Did you use the Pro Controller or Joy-Cons for it? Uh, I used a Pro Controller. I should have used my SNES controller, now that I think yeah. about it. Oh, I dude, even I, I don't even think about that. I don't think I had that here. I have I think that's at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. Because I just was like, oh, I could have used the the Joy-Cons, and it probably would have been a slightly mm-hmm. better experience mm-hmm. just because the Joy-Cons have a better D-pad, mm-hmm. technically. Mm-hmm. I tried the Joy-Cons. Mm-mm. Oh, you did? <laughs> <Okay>. Cooper's like, <laughs> absolutely like, not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just as bad. Incorrect. <laughs> Yeah, I have nothing to add to this conversation. <laughs> I You're didn't play it at all. I've never played an F Zero game. It's just I like racing games, but I just never felt the need to play an F Zero game. Well, congratulations on the losing the non-competitive download station. <laughs> it, <laughs> you know what? I'll take it, big loser. <laughs> if you are gonna play an F Zero game, find a way to play F Zero AX. That is. By far the best experience I've had playing F Zero. Mm-hmm. Literally play it play play the one on the SNES. <laughs> it's on I think it's on NSO. Just play the SNES one. It's way better. True. It is. Don't just don't play the GBA one. Mm-hmm. Not, it is not aged well. Is it on the uh the it normal GBA or NSO or is it on the if like, it's on the if it's on SNES, NSO. it's on the regular NSO. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna say because I don't I'm not paying the money to get the advanced NSO because I, I don't need it. I just use the normal NSO and it's fine. Yeah, but if it's on in a, in Yeah, a I mean F Zero on the SNES, fun. like that. Now that game, that's a, like I'm, I'm not trying to. I don't know. It's besides the point, but that is a really, really good game. Even if you're not an F Zero guy, it's a, it's a top ten SNES title. It's oh, yeah. definitely way better than Maximum Velocity is, but just by far <laughs> so much better. Um, well, that may not be a very high bar, though. I mean, like, it's really not. It's a it's a basic concept. There's not that much to the game, but it is like when you take that same concept and you could give it a control scheme and that physics that functions? that play well with the theme of the game of maximum speed all the time. It yeah, it works really well. Mm-hmm. Amazing. F zero fans are wrong. We don't need a new F zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, cool. That's that was fun. I'm glad we got we finally got a game in here that we're heated about. Uh, True. Everybody hated it. <laughs> well, they can't all AMG be winners. AMG seal of disapproval. Yeah, seal of denial. Uh. Well, cool. All right. That was fun. Uh, on to the tidbits uh so fortnite was the uh, supposedly the most played game of 2023 i say supposedly but w. really i mean it's across uh let's see game rank so this page uh this is from kotaku 
Mm. Um, and well, the article is. Uh, it's an industry report by market researcher New Zoo. Um, the games the games ranking in the top ten by average MAU. I don't know what did they did they say what it is. Uh, monthly active users. Um, are over seven years old on average and generally fall into one of four categories. So the the point of this study, like the main takeaway is that most games people play right now are not new. Um, oh, yeah. Fortnite was the number one across all platforms. Yeah, PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Fortnite was the number one across all four of those. Um, mm. Everything else kind of changes up. The second spot is Roblox for PC, GTA 5 for PlayStation, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 slash 3 slash Warzone on Xbox, and uh, Tears of the Kingdom for Switch. Um, mm. And then, yeah, just a Minecraft is a common theme across all this these lists, uh, different spots for platform, but they're, they're all there. Roblox is a common theme. Call of Duty is a common theme. Um, GTA 5. Apex Legends mm-hmm. for the consoles, not for the PC, but um, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, this, and just, the Switch has a lot of Apex on PC is cancer. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, a little bit, a little bit. The Switch list is a lot different, obviously, because it has Mario Kart and Mario Wonder and Smash. Um, Fall Guys made an appearance on the Switch list. It's the only list that has a Fall. Oh no, uh, PlayStation has Fall Guys at number ten. Oh wow, um, that's impressive. So yeah, it's it's pretty interesting that like while the industry is growing, the most popular games are ones that have been out for several years. Um, yeah, that makes sense for Nintendo at least. Do uh, do any of the console lists have Elden Ring on there? Or Here, did it I can. Make the cut? I don't know why I'm holding that screenshot from you guys. There you go. Um. Which one did you say? Like Elden Ring. No. Dang, what did I see? Sad. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. The the Xbox list is so sad. Fortnite, Call of Duty, GTA Five, yeah. Minecraft, Roblox, Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, Starfield, Apex Legends, and FIFA twenty three. Yeah, no, that's unfortunate. That's a rough that list. That sounds like the most Xbox list I've ever heard. Dude, of course, okay, freaking League just, of Legends makes the PC list. Just to confirm. I'm a league FIFA user. 24 came out last year, right? That's how that works. FIFA, yes, I think. Yeah, that's that's very sad. Bad, bad job, EA. I mean, I think well, they've been they've been making worse and worse ones. To be fair, the interesting statistic is at the bottom of the list. The average years on the market of the games combined, PC is almost 10 years old average. Uh, PlayStation, Xbox yeah. are around seven, seven and a half, uh, and the Switch is only four, three point nine. Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that that that's explainable. Um, I mean, so if my let's average see. is like a month old, a month old, a month old, and then Mark Hardy. five years old. Yeah. How does that make my average? I think that's been my uh, game speed machine. Yeah, I bet if it wasn't for Mario Kart 8 and Minecraft, that average would be a lot lower, too. And I guess Fortnite, too, True. yeah. I mean, okay, New Horizons is 4, and Smash is 5, but uh, Wonder came out last year, Tears came out last year. Not Fortnite, I guess, but technically... Scarlet which, and Violet came out two years ago? On, that would be dependent on when it came out, right? And not uh, like for Switch and not overall. I would assume. I I, I would maybe. guess so, yeah. Because uh, otherwise, Minecraft would be raising their number significantly. Uh, the Scarlet Violet came out two years ago. Uh, Progress Legacy came out last year, very late into the year. Can you make a part? Ooh. Um, Starfield is the only dedicated single player game to crack the top 10 across Xbox and PlayStation. That hurts. Especially because I know it released on PlayStation last year. That hurts. Yeah, it's fascinating that, like, I mean, I guess it makes sense 
because single player games you're only gonna you only put so much time into, but mm-hmm. online games theoretically you're infinite. True. Um, so, but it is disappointing to not see any like PlayStation home made games on this list. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, the fact that EA Sports Football Club 24 is number four on the list for place. That's wild. Thanks, you're up. <laughs> Damn. Um, I don't know if it's crazy. <laughs> Newsu's data also shows that only 66 titles accounted for 80% of all playtime last year. Uh, 60% of that playtime was spent in games that are six years old or older. Oh, yeah. Fortnite, Roblox, League of Legends, Minecraft, and GTA V accounted for 27% of all total playtime in that year, or in last year. That doesn't surprise me. There's a, a lot of people. Only 8% of video playing. game playtime was spent on new non-annual titles like Diablo 4 or Baldur's Gate 3. Wow. That's a little bit surprising that it's so low for like Baldur's Gate 3, considering, I mean, how many times, or how many people I know and how much time those people have put into that game, and me being one of them as well, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, like a lot of hours from a few people though, and a few hours from millions and millions and millions of people that's, playing Fortnite. Like it's just I think it's just the size of the of the player base is what does it. Mm-hmm. That's that's definitely probably true. That and also kids don't give a shit about Butters Gate three. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Well they, to be fair, they probably can't fully comprehend it the way that somebody else who can understand the complex dialogue sometimes Yeah, fuck them ki- fuck them kids. Though. Oh gosh! <laughs> uh, only twenty three percent of playtime spent on twenty twenty three on new games. Yeah, hmm. man. Uh, more than half of that twenty three percent was spent in big annual titles like l- the latest Madden or NBA games. Hmm. This data is fascinating. Oh, it is. Crazy. This data physically hurts me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a big fan of data, so I'm kind of I'm kind of living for it. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy though. Animal Crossing being like one of the only like farming games. I don't, I don't know. That sounds like the right word, but like you know, like well, I guess the Sims. Farming games. I, I mean, I mess, as much as Animal Crossing isn't talked about today, I mean, like there's still a huge fan base of it of farming. people that play it just every day, even if it's only for ten or twenty minutes, and I, that adds up. That's, that's true. true. Um, especially for, you know, the switch, like the, I think the switch gets away with not having the same issue of like the sports games or whatever, solely because they run like trash and are incredibly unenjoyable because of how poorly they're programmed. Optimized. Yeah. yeah. Um, so people just don't play those games on switch as much. Um, like I saw names complaining about the Easter eggs returning in Animal Crossing again. I was like, if you're playing now, why aren't you time skipping? Because that's cheating, Alex. Okay, but (laughs) pick your poison. Pick your poison. Are you going to complain that the Easter eggs are there during Easter, or are you going to time travel? Both. I mean, no. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think you uh, understood the assignment. I don't think I listened. (laughs) (laughs) When do you ever? True. I Monkey don't no believe here. you quite comprehend. <laughs> Monkey, no evil. Um, so, yeah, if I'm data dig there. Uh, Xbox president Sarah Bond has set up a new team dedicated to game preservation and uh, forwards compatibility. I don't know what forwards compatibility means. The games we make in the future will work on the console. <laughs> cool. Amazing. Uh, forward compatibility is the ability of a system or software to work with future versions or upgrades of the same system or software without requiring any changes or modifications. I mean, great. Interesting. I would mm. hope so. I mean, to be fair, Xbox does do a really good job of that. I mean, 
you know, that compliment only goes so far, but the Xbox One still can play a lot of stuff and is still fully integrated into everything that's possible. True. Again, that only gets you so far because it's the Xbox One, but uh, it's there, so cool. I'm glad we gave up on backwards compatibility, though. Oh, yeah, that's that's lame. Mm-hmm. Although, I guess if you do game preservation the right way, you don't need it, but it's Xbox, and there's no way that they're going to do no that the, right, do the way. right way. Yeah. Look, look at Nintendo and just do what Nintendo's doing with game preservation, but make it publicly available. That's that's all I'm asking. You uh, preserve all the games, but make it so that everyone can play them. Yeah, do what Nintendo does, except don't be a stingy bitch and let everybody play them. True. <laughs> because Nintendo has all of them. They just don't Yeah, that's share. Nintendo's problem. It's not that they don't have them. It's that they just don't want you to have them. Yeah. They're like, it, like, if I can't look, have them, guys, nobody it's can. Coming, it's like, coming to NSO. Bro, this game was on the Wii U. No, like, cause Nintendo literally has like the Disney Vault of gaming, bro. True. Like, there's so there's so oh. many companies that have gone to them and like, hey, do you still have our source code? And they're like, yeah. Cause what what game was it? I think like one of them. One of them that narrows it down. We're we're figuring it out. <laughs> we're figuring it out. <laughs> Um. Oh, uh, Cooper News of the Week. Crypto the Nancer- Necro Dancer is doing a crossover with Hatsune Miku. True. There's your Cooper News of the Week stamp of approval there. It's pretty goaded, yo. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 dev, Larian's publishing director. Uh, that's a mouthful. That's a, yeah, that's a hell of a title. Uh, they call the game industry layoffs, quote, an avoidable fuck-up. App description. Yeah. No. Um, but how are they going to buy a third yacht, Grant? Yeah, how do we make the numbers go up? Infinite growth. Um, so yeah. Num- uh, numbers go up. Come on, yeah. guys. How are we going to get those numbers up if you're making money working here? Yeah, nobody understands that we need to give more tax breaks to the rich. How else are they going to keep those numbers going up? Nobody understands. They need (laughs) more tax breaks. Mm -hmm. The banks in the Cayman Islands need to be bigger. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Apple is going to allow game emulators on the iOS App Store. I actually did see this headline. Uh, So... Cool, this though. one's very interesting because it specifically states that, well, yes, technically you can have a game emulator. The games have to be available in the game emulator. You can't just like sideload them and have that be, uh, you know, a viable option. Well, that makes sense, though. So. so you can get emulators, but you can't. You can get an emulator, but like, it's not it, worth. Well, you, you can't. Have, you can't you because you legal... can't offer the game. Like, you can offer the emulator, yeah. but you can't give people games unless the person that owns the game or company that owns the game consents to it, and True. probably asks for a cut. Obviously, uh, you you know how the uh, legal definition is that you can have your emulator, but you can't have the emulated game unless you. Uh, copy it yourself. Yeah, unless you have that, own a copy of the game and digitally convert it. it on, yeah. yeah, that that's what yeah. this feels like. It's like legally, yes, you can have this game over here or your this game this game player, but how the fuck are you going to have this game? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is so if Apple doesn't allow you to provide your own files, then it doesn't do anything because this, I mean, that same law is what emulators have been using since the beginning of time on Android. Basically, you've always been able to download emulators on the Google Play Store. In fact, I have a couple. Um, But with Android, you know, the file system is just straight up open. You can go into a file directory like it's Windows and uh, just, you know, either download some stuff or put them over for your PC or whatever. And they all what work. do you mean? I didn't. I didn't know that file was there. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm weird. I'm all for I'm all for it. I don't give a damn. Uh, especially if you are if you if you already pay for NSO or whatever. Especially, I don't give a damn. I don't really give a damn in the first place about really old games like that, but even more so. And eh, I this just feels stupid because if if Apple isn't gonna let you load files you put on the phone yourself, then what's the point? Because the mm-hmm. the developers can't offer those games legally. Um. Yeah, I don't know about that. I remember back in the day, I remember help uh, jailbreaking my iPhone 4 to get a uh, GBA emulator on there and play uh, Harvest Moon. Oh, man, the days. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back when it was easy to do that. Yeah. Um, New status update uh, from Concerned Ape on Stardew Valley 1.6 for console and mobile. Uh, they are in progress and will be released as soon as possible. I have no specific release date, but I will give updates if there is anything significant to share. I really appreciate your patience and understanding. Yeah, Haunted Chocolatier's dead. Not forever, yeah. but for a while. Rip. For a little while longer. Why? <laughs> Why make new game when you can just keep updating the old game? <laughs> yeah, but instead of it just being the same game again with like updated graphics, it's like the update is substantial here. This is the good kind of updating the old game. This is not the yeah. this is just EA FIFA again, but n- new character roster. True. No, realistically, uh, so what <laughs> what Stardew Valley should be is. I uh, need a break from working on the new game. But what it actually is, is Haunted Chocolatiers. I need a break from working on That's starting that. Yeah. Um, so, that would be exciting. Too bad I... Uh, I mean, I guess I'll... I don't know. Now, like... I'm sure I'll go back to my Switch save eventually and try to 100% it. But, man, now I just got I got a huge punch in the gut on that progress. Um, yeah. Oh well. Um, and finally, for the tidbits, Splatoon Three Spring Fest starts uh, in eleven days, the nineteenth. So not this coming Friday, but the following Friday. Sick. Uh, it's bunnies versus bears versus what? Bunnies versus Where's the... bears versus chickens. Yeah, baby chicks. Baby chicks versus little bunnies versus bear cubs. Dude, oh, if you pick chicks, you can be like, oh, I pick up chicks. Yeah, you should do that because that's the only way you're ever gonna. <laughs> jokes right, like that, you ain't wrong. All right, buddy. Okay, buddy. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, who, who got below par in basketball? That's what. That's what. I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> hey, whose team lost <laughs> twice? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Meet me outside. <laughs> Meet me outside. I am in your wall. Kiss me outside. How about that? One two seven dot one four five dot zero dot one. So true. So true. Um. Okay. Couple old but still interesting tidbits uh, in honor of the 3DS and Wii U. Uh, the home theme for the Wii U is harmonized between the gamepad and the TV speakers and is actually tuned for a stereo setup of like a front and a rear speaker instead of the typical left right stereo setup but oh. um the if you turn one of them off you'll hear the notes are different and they actually will harmonize and if you get them at the right distance it sounds really 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 good it's not something we ever really paid attention to but it's a it's a neat little thing they did there um oh, that's cool in J- and also in Japan, stores had an application for the 3DS called the Amiibo Lottery that could be used to show off Amiibo. It gave six Mario-themed coins, but wasn't meant for public use. Mario-themed coins? Yeah, hold on. Uh, I saw a video of it on uh, Reddit earlier. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I found six. it. Oh, oh, it's software that companies had but people weren't supposed to have yeah oh dang interesting 
Oh, I bet I can get that on the H shop. I'm sure. This is why we oh, yeah. must mod our 3DSs, dude. H shop is so goaded. Yo, yo. Just steal it. Just steal all of it. It's so easy. If they're not going to let you have it, just steal all of it. The truth, the truth. Okay. The solution is theft. <laughs> the solution is I can't give you money for the thing I want. What do you expect me to do? Because I'll just I'll get the thing I want and I'll give you the money. I can't give you the money. That sucks, man. I mean, you said it yourself. I can't pay for it. <laughs> um. Okay, a couple rumors uh, from Tom Warren. I understand that Sea of Thieves will be a key test for whether other Xbox exclusives games make might make their way to PS5 or Nintendo Switch. Well, um, oh, yeah. if I have any guess, it's going to run like trash on Switch. See if these going to run like a pile of dog on Switch. Because I knew it was going to PS5. Um, yeah, going to Switch. Yeah, that's it's officially announced. Huh. Whoa. Impressive. I didn't think Rare had it in them. Uh, well, they didn't have it in them. It was... Microsoft. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <ask. laughs> Um. Oh, oh, wait. No, no, no. No, it is. It is not. I just got played harder than I think I've ever been played. Uh, it is rumored to be coming uh oh. to switch in ps5 it is not officially announced uh no, it I, is I, on PS3 yet. um like it. oh no it wasn't it was okay there's just no date for it um it is available to wish list no it's on it's coming to ps5 for sure that's on a, a xbox official website it is not whether let's see uh there is no date for the switch version though it's pretty obscure it's you can wish list it on ps5 now oh it's coming at april 30th hmm. um there are other games coming to switch but not sea of thieves at least yet to be right. fully transparent i clicked on a video that looked that was a fake nintendo trailer that looked really convincing and i wasn't paying any attention to the channel I just assumed, and it said pre-order now, and I clicked the link to go to the Nintendo page, and I got Rickrolled! I got Rickrolled in 2024! Because <laughs> I didn't look at the channel. Damn, dude, I got, I just got played so hard. Uh, yeah, I had to come clean on that. I couldn't, I couldn't hide that in. That's, yeah, you gotta be open about getting Rickrolled these days. Doesn't happen often. <laughs> Dang, man. No, it was an April Fool's video. <laughs> uh, oh, that was too good. Um, Midori, the Japanese Sega and Atlas leaker, says that she's not quitting thanks to friends and Sega and Atlas fans. Posts the I'll be there no matter what meme. So Midori's not going away. Yay. She just rage quitted for a minute. I think Damn. it's funny that a Japanese leaker who talks in Japanese, she's learned like English as she's done this. Use the only thing no matter what. You know. Yeah, it is good. It is I really think that's funny that she basically just rage quitted. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not actually going anywhere. I was just mad. I just got heated. I'm okay. Um so true and fair. And Xbox is moving, quote, full speed ahead on next-gen console and internal email reveals. Great. This one's going to do it, guys. They're going to turn is everything it around. So well on this one. Finally. Time to move on. Um, the email obtained by Windows Central and verified to be genuine by Microsoft also announced the formation of a game preservation team. Oh, that's the one that... We talked about it a few minutes ago. Uh, quote, we are moving full speed ahead on our next generation hardware focused on delivering the biggest technological leap ever in a generation. Uh, okay. some, uh, some big promises. 
Yeah, no further information was shared regarding the hardware itself, nor when fans might be able to buy it, but documents leaked last year suggested that Microsoft plans to release this next console in 2028. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, if you want a biggest next generational leap ever before, I think you need more time. I because yeah, like you the give yourself some time for tech to get to a point where it's an actual leap. Yeah, because even now, like next gen stuff that we have compared to three or four years ago, isn't really all that next gen. It's mostly just like uh, we can make it feel next gen with DLSS. Yeah. Uh, I saw a um, listing on Best Buy yesterday or two days ago for a um, forty seventy Founders Edition. Uh, I just available on Best Buy. I waited in the queue and I got it in my car. I was like, oh my god, this is real. I thought about it and I googled it like the difference because I have a 3080 Ti right now and they're like yeah. yeah no this is stupid don't buy that like either uh spend the money on a 4090 or just wait because really all you're getting is DLSS and that's not even true frame gen or like you know it's not native frame gen it's fake post stuff so mm. um I wonder when we're gonna get to 8K gaming never. I mean, that was the selling point of the these current consoles that they could do 8K. I don't know how well, but they can do it. The HDMI port does support 8K video tra transmission. I think that's like the only thing. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they could do it, but I don't know if they will. Um, honestly, I don't know if there's a reason still yet to move away from 1440p 144 hertz. Like that's there's not really much that you can do at 4K above 60 hertz still because games aren't optimized properly for it in the first place. Well, can't wait to see yeah. what this next-gen hardware is. Um, and finishing topic for the week to round out our, our grievance of the 3DS and Wii U dying... Um, Favorite game and or favorite memories of those consoles go. Mm. Splatfest. For sure. Very fun. Fun. Yeah, my like... my first favorite memory, I have to say, because we played Pl Pl Splatoon yesterday, was playing Splatoon with Cameron on the phone on Wii U back in yeah. the day. That's a oh, yeah. that's a gold memory. Um Every photo we have, uh, a cringy 3DS <laughs> band photo we ever have, uh, those are good memories. They're still extremely cringy. They're going to get cringier until cringy. the day I die, but they're, they're good great. memories. They're cringy, but I, you know, it's it's beautiful how, like, you know, none of that was there in the moment. It was all just like, this is incredible. We're doing good at the thing that we're a part of, and also our 3DSs are in our hands. <laughs> like, there was just, like, like there was no correlation at all. It was just Dude, our 3D. We have our 3DSs, we, and we did something cool. <laughs> we still should have done that at the wedding. The yeah, event. yeah, we yeah we need to do that Uh, before all three of us are married. We need to pull that off. We, oh, yeah. we will be up in Huntsville in a couple months for our cousin's wedding, so we could try to swing it then. Yeah, bro. Let's go to uh, we could go to uh the barcade near my place. Yeah, I got one. Oh god. <laughs> Yee, dude. Uh, I, uh, dude. I hate that haircut on me. Looks so bad. <laughs> <laughs> everything about this photo is bad for all of us. I just, this, this, <laughs> your haircut is not the <laughs> the bad thing here. <laughs> all of our hair is kind of kind of bad, to be honest with you. That's, whew. man, my that my hair is disgusting. I hate I hate it. I hate that your, hair. Your hair in that photo is what my hair is at now. I need a haircut. But it's not even just the shape. It's that it was always so <laughs> greasy. I didn't understand proper hair maintenance. So, like, having long hair when you don't know how to have long hair Control is it. bad. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Like, I didn't mind the way I look in 2020 with long hair because I actually knew what a man bun was and I knew how to 
maintain long hair properly, but that's just greasy, nasty. Like, look at ew, dude. That one's worse. <laughs> that's because we're after the competition. Yeah, so true. Okay, yeah, cut some slack worse. there. We were super sweaty. But still, dude, this oh, is man. just what is this? Oh man. Okay. Alex looks like Cooper in that photo, dude. Alex doesn't look like Alex in that photo. <laughs> oh my god. Nah. Dude, Alex is mad in the first one because he's got a koozie with no beer. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I still I'm I'm using that koozie these days. I'm I got sick of it sitting on a shelf and never being appreciated, so I, I use it only here. I don't take that one anywhere. I take other ones other places. Yeah. But that one no, gotta, I do use it when I'm here. You gotta be able to uh keep it. You don't wanna like leave it somewhere on accident. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I do all the time. So that one stays in this room, but I do use it. Um, no, the only other photo I have from that time is this one. Uh, mm, <laughs> that one's extra <laughs> bad. I, That's not I even related to the 3DS. Let's just, let me just skate on past that one. Uh, <laughs> I love the five <laughs> pixels that are on that photo. Yeah. That is so great. Mm. Um, favorite yeah, so, uh, anyway, favorite back to... Some favorite memories. Yeah, so that's um, a... I mean, yeah. to be fair, those are some of my favorite. Um, yeah, those those cover the memories pretty well. So, Captain Toad, the original one, definitely one of my favorites. But after, you know, it, it's still very much designed to be a Wii U game. Mm -hmm. But having that two-player mode in the Switch version does kind of bump it down a little bit. So probably Splatoon. It's um, just yeah, so solid. Oh, dude. Oh. Nintendo Land, bro. So true. Top so true. Tier. That one they cannot redo on those Switch. They could. They could replicate a lot of that. It's hard for me to pick one. like Mario Kart 8. <laughs> Because it's still around, and I'm I've become so sour towards the game as as you guys know. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah. like it's... you know, going back to 2014 and thinking about it, like I was like when it first came out, I was oh, so yeah. excited about that game. It was so it was unlike any like the it, the graphics at the time were unheard of for a Mario Kart game. It looked so good. The controls were it incredible. Still looks so good. The gravity thing, like... all the marketing behind it, the Mercedes cars coming in, like. They... That was so cool. It, here's Ooh, the thing: got right? a soundtrack that Mario Kart deserves. Yeah, amen. Like, amen to that. If you if you go back and look at other games from you know 2013, 2015, like that time period, Mario Kart 8 is quite possibly the best looking one. Ten years later. I mean, like, yeah, it's just um, it the the art style just holds up so well compared to all the realism that was going on in the game industry. It's still going on. Yeah. But as time progresses, those games are going to continue looking worse because they're no longer the realistic style that we have because we've seen better. It's like if you go back and look at a PS1 game. You know? Yeah. Um also, this like it, it's tough to pick a lot of them because we all have either sequels or or ports. But uh, mm -hmm. Bayonetta yeah. two blew my mind. That, yeah, that game blew my mind. Solid. Like, and not only because it was a really really good game, but also because I was sixteen and incredibly horny, and <laughs> there was an incredibly <laughs> horny explosion game on the Nintendo console. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, blew um, my mind in more ways than one. I know my best 3DS game. It's a link was like, oh, that's what they look like. <laughs> yeah, fact. <laughs> Let's see. Probably. Oh, okay. Memories wise, Smash Bros. demo on 3DS. Oh yeah, yeah. Getting like, the being a part of the Club Nintendo thing and getting it early. And all of us like hey. constantly checking our emails to see when we got the the code and oh mm -hmm. man yeah, 
very hard to argue that was not like a top uh memory for three <laughs> yeah go oh, back to dude. remember like we we thought we were the shit because we got the demo like a week early or something <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't even think we were, like, the first wave of it. I think we were the second. No, I think we were first. Were we first? I think some of us got it first, and then we just shared. I don't know. I don't fully remember. Um, oh, dude. Favorite Wii game, hands down, Yoshi's Woolly World. Like, there, that, mm-hmm. well, yes, it did get a port to 3DS. That's not, that's not an improvement. That's it's got more content. Weird. It does have more content, but so does Hyrule Warriors. It's not an improvement. It's, Hold on. We already have this Hold game. On. Hyrule Warriors on 3DS was not an improvement. Hyrule Warriors has a better version. Yeah, on Switch. On Switch, that's right. Yeah, but I'm saying the 3DS version was not an improvement. But like you gotta we gotta take out the the port and or you know switch version because we're trying to cons- like at the time. Hyrule Warriors was another mind-blowing game. We finally get the game was... where we can be Link and we do nothing but beat the shit out of everything for hours. True. Like that was yeah. so awesome at the time. Like <laughs> Dynasty yeah. Warriors wasn't really like wasn't really doing anything. It hadn't been doing anything and all of a sudden they're like bang, Dynasty Warriors but you're Link Ooh. now. Um yeah, that was hype. Dude. Uh, uh, uh good, 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 good. Yeah, my bad. Uh, dude, Mario Maker, like when it first came out, bro. Oh my lord! Like when that, I was, pretty... that was oh hype. man, well, I was uh, through like some of my stages last night, and oh my, dude, I literally uploaded like literally anything, bro. I remember that <laughs> there was like that one guy who had like unbeaten stages, so you would go beat his stages for hours. Oh my gosh! And then like comment something like <laughs> that. That sounds like Young Cooper. <laughs> yep. Um, because the guy kept the... uploading stages to try to just kept going and being. <laughs> um, the transition from two D to three D Pokemon. That was like a monumental thing yeah I pokemon recall. x was nuts the z moves that was like so cool in uh alala yeah because they're not the mega what, no mega, the, mega, 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 mega yeah whatever whichever every, one was in it has to have its own unique gimmick now i cannot believe triple battles was the last 2d gimmick honestly <laughs> and it didn't even stay unique um oh Although it I, didn't make it into sun and moon i gotta sun bring this June. up Ooh. yeah go ahead um back when the wii u was brand new it was before i had gotten mine uh i came over to y'all's house and y'all were showing me nintendo land and that was like when i that's that was the day that i was like oh bro i think i want one of these and i asked for it for christmas that later that nice. year but at the time i came over and you guys were showing me nintendo land and, and uh the four of us were playing and cooper was still young and uh, I remember it was, I think, the Luigi's Mansion, like, ghost-themed minigame. Yeah. Uh, and we're playing on Cooper's profile because he didn't have a stamp or something, and we would not do the thing that he needed us to do <laughs> to let him have the stamp, and he was rage-scream-crying <laughs> because he, wouldn't, he couldn't get the stamp. He was like, Sad. bro, That's just let me get the stupid stamp! <laughs> <laughs> and we just kept pushing his buttons. We were like, if it's so stupid, why do you want it? And he just <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Poor oh Cooper. This is what happens when you're the youngest in the group. I was like, Brent, Brendan used to do that type of shit sometimes too. So it, it's, Every, I think it's just like the older brother thing to do is to just like absolutely fuck over. Yeah, yeah, it's a combo of like kids don't have good anger management because they're kids, and also the older kids don't want to hang out with the younger kids. So when we have to, we just fuck with them the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that was that is it was so cringy in the moment. But at the, now that is like that is such a good memory. It's so it's so funny. Also, uh, a couple years later, yeah. when Smash came out and uh, or 
2015 because it was by the time the pit amiibo had come out i remember we were all were like oh dude let's all train up an amiibo and then we'll come over uh, we went over to y'all's house i came over to y'all's house and we're like we'll make them fight we'll see which one can train the best amiibo and mine barely beat cooper's but it almost died because cooper had trained it perfectly to do the stupid kirby bs <laughs> of brick hammer brick hammer over and over and over again <laughs> And my pit could not figure it out for the life of me. It got a lucky hit in, and I ended up winning. But I, <laughs> oh man, I was I was raging. Like, how is my people losing to this? <laughs> Cooper, Cooper and his oh. um, ooh, Speaking of amiibo related uh, memories, you know, in that Titan frame, uh, that summer, right when Europe was getting Doctor Mario and Ganon. And Olimar early, and you and I were just like, "No, we're going to buy them now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do we import these from Europe? We have to have these. <laughs> and then both of them sat on shelves forever, and we're just like, "No, I'm okay with this." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's, it's hard. Okay. To... We live through <clears throat> the original twelve, where three of them were incredibly. That's true. There. Yeah, I I remember the Martha whole and, and now Marth is one of the most reprinted amiibo. Yeah. Yeah, and there was the whole fiasco about the reprint of uh the Animal Crossing villager having different shaped eyes or something on yeah, the stickers. Yeah, yeah. Lower eyes and smaller. Yeah. But he had a five head. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, oh, favorite game is a really a really tough choice though. I think for 3ds, I'd probably have to say either Majora's Mask 3D or um, probably Pokemon X. I just put a lot of time into that. Smash Brothers is really I... good, but I don't want to pick that one because it's an easy choice. Yeah, yeah. Smash is just Smash and Mario Kart are just always a good option to have. Like it's hard to be like, oh, but that you know that's my favorite. What do you mean, well, Walt it's Disney? It's always there. You know, you just need to have it available. That's Walt what Disney World ban bus with like twelve of us on KDSs. Yeah, hitting the download play, and you could tell who was poor and who wasn't because <laughs> you had to play a shy guy if you didn't have a copy of the game. <laughs> true, true. Um, yeah, no, dude, it's just there's so you know because especially like yeah. Obviously, we grew up with a GameCube, but it's just yeah. Like, there's only so much you remember from your childhood games. 3DS, we were old enough to actually like remember the experiences we had with the games. Yeah, like how uh, Yoshi's New Island fucking sucks. Yeah, <laughs> I remember <laughs> you hated. Dude, yeah, you were a hater on that game from day one. I remember dude, that. I, I day got one that, hater. Like, very early on into you know the release i don't i don't remember if i got it you know at launch being a poor teenager but i i got it i'm just like this is not yoshi's island <laughs> <laughs> i was so mad Damn. because it wasn't yoshi's island but like slightly better you know mm -hmm. and then woolly world came out and i was like this is yoshi's island this is yeah this is what i was waiting for so um, I never had a Wii U mm -hmm. because I don't know, we had the Wii and then by the time our Wii died, it was kinda like me and Brendan were older and we didn't really care that much because we had a PS3 and a PS4 and we played that pretty much all the time. But still like in terms of handheld, I still like to this day, we'll sometimes get my 3DS and play a game like Pokemon on my 3DS. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The 3DS is still arguably the best handheld to have today, as long as you count if it's modded. Because a modded 3DS can do so much junk portably and so well that I, I, it's basically like a modern emulator console you buy online. But not only can you play retro games on it, you can still play 3DS and DS games on it, both with right. cartridges and or downloading them. So you get the whole those two it libraries and you can set up NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, PlayStation 1, 
like uh, so much right. stuff game boy game boy advance uh and the screen is you know a good pixel density for those kinds of games they look really well they run perfectly fine on them so it's it, yeah it really is still like a today if you mod it it's oh uh, dude triforce heroes i remember playing that for like two hours total and basically all of it was just me fucking with you guys because i didn't really care about the game so when we play <laughs> together i just kept throwing you guys on the side <laughs> it was, and it would like, just evolve into rage baiting the whole time oh. all, all of us just throwing each other like we were playing uh, mario, mario Wii. Wii. yeah yeah dude that oh not you know obviously not a wii u memory but like you know right before that leading into uh what was that was that seventh or eighth, eighth grade it's now sixth or seventh uh when we were in fickert's class and we brought it and we were just killing everybody yeah. Do you remember that yeah yeah including me <laughs> <laughs> i do remember that i just had nom flashbacks for a second um <laughs> as far as my favorite wii u game goes i think i'd have to probably pick i don't know probably either bayonetta 2 or um I want to play Splatoon, but honestly, subtracting out everything post-2017, Mario Kart 8 at the time was just so mind-blowingly good. I... I'm a sucker for jazz music, oh, yeah. and the soundtrack just hits that nerve right on the money. The graphics were Dude. great. The courses were great. All the marketing and stuff was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Playing it with people was so much fun. Yeah. Uh, Drew, uh, Pikmin 3, the original. Like, just yeah, see, unfortunately, to... when Pikmin 3 first came out, I was still a bit too stupid to get the idea of Pikmin. Uh, yeah. Now, I agree, Pikmin 3 is an incredible game, but at the time, I, I can't say I was that into it. That, That's probably why I wouldn't uh... pick it. That one, I don't know if I'd say this is my favorite Wii U game, but it's certainly... Yeah, you because know, I I didn't gotten to play the other two uh, at their launches because I got Pikmin New Play Control and then randomly probably the best find I've ever found the copy of Pikmin Two on GameCube and then I got you know Pikmin Two New Play Control like mm -hmm. but I hadn't gotten to actually experience you know at launch here is Pikmin Three and I'm like oh yeah give that mm, that was so good. Ooh. Followed eventually by the disappointment that is Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Uh, yeah. Kyle, what you said a few minutes ago about not getting a Wii U because by the time it came out, you guys were kind of older and moving on to PlayStation and stuff. I that made me think. I'm pretty sure. I mean, like the only reason I got a Wii U and did so much with it. And really, part of the reason I'm such a huge Nintendo slut today is literally because of you guys. Because I wouldn't have gotten one without seeing one. And yeah. literally everybody else oh, I played yeah. video games with at the time, it was all on 360. I played tons of Black Ops 1, Zombies, and Multiplayer. Tons of Black Ops 2. Um, Dude, I like, remember, uh, you know, late middle, early high school, everyone was just like, what's your xbox uh friend you know whatever yeah, gamer tag uh, gamer tag and i'm just like i don't have one <laughs> i don't have an xbox i have <laughs> it's the scott the was bit i have a wii u i have a wii <laughs> 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 yeah i uh I, I remember being being stuck in a lot of dilemmas of who do i want to play with today because you guys were always wanting to play something online and a bunch of other people were always wanting to hop on black ops because they did basically every day so i was like huh, i don't want anyone to hate me <laughs> but I, I can't play two things at once <laughs> yeah that is that, that's funny though like i literally I, the med, like how different my life would look if i uh didn't get a wii u probably a lot better i probably have a lot more free money lying around <laughs> um, <laughs> You would certainly not have all those games behind you. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I can scapegoat you guys for that. Fuck y'all. I don't have a house because of this. Uh, but I have this. We'll just call this an investment. I don't even know what your hobby would be. Golf? Golf? 
<laughs> I don't know. We, we, gotta like, figure out, we gotta figure out what feels like everybody's hobby if they don't. Uh, I mean, don't probably cars. Uh, I do. Good I do point. enjoy playing golf, but I'm not upset. I, I'm not. I don't know uh, brand statistics on clubs, and I barely understand the difference between clubs. I get the physics side of it, but I don't. Like, I'm not a golf pro. I can analyze football pretty well because I watch so much of it these days. But golf, no, not at all. <laughs> I like golf on. Uh, I like Wii Sports golf. That's that's my golf. Very understandable. There you go, dude. Mm. Oh, Super Mario 3D World, bro. 3D World, 3D yeah. Land. Um, Both of those though. are very peak games. I remember my first 3DS game was Mario Brothers 2. Um, and that blew my mind because I didn't have Mario Wii on my own, so I only played a little bit when I was at either y'all's house or somebody else that had it. Um. So the going Jay's from, say what? The days people brought it to school. Yeah. Um, or like some of my buddies that lived over where my, my dad's house was out there yeah. had one. I could play it there sometimes. But going from the original one on DS to Mario 2 and just being like dopamine rushed. That was like my first time getting really screwed up on dopamine because of the coins. Like, uh, I man, that, yeah. That sound, though. It's good. I've actually, actually, no, I forgot to mention this. I have played a little bit of Super Mario Bros. 2 over the past couple of weeks because I've just been playing a bunch of 3DS games and I popped that one back in and, like, oh, man, I forgot about the, just the overstimulation of coins in this game. That's, like, the whole thing. So, like, get all the coins and you're like, hell yeah. <laughs> you actually can, though. Yeah, and you get a new screen for getting a million coins. Yeah, but someone did, like, could you get all those coins in the level? And it was like, yeah, actually. There are a lot of hard work and dedication. There are a lot of hard work and dedication. You can get all the coins in the level. Man. It's a sad, it's it's a sad like, moment to send these. I mean, like, obviously, we're not going to forget about them. But, you know, like, officially, these consoles will never be the same again. Even with yeah, even uh, if the Pretendo network becomes you know really stable and easy to do, um, it's yeah somber. End of an era, bro. Melancholy for sure, man. All right. Well, I guess that's gonna wrap it up for the show this week. We thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please share us with a friend. Add us on Twitter at All Gamers with a K. We post every Wednesday, seven a.m. Central Standard Time. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube.com slash Stormwind Games. Again, share us with a friend. Let us know your thoughts about the episode. What are your favorite 3DS and Wii U thoughts? Um, are you going to set up the Pretendo Network? I might see you on there. Um, let us know. Is Xbox's next generation console that comes out in four years going to be the greatest of all time? Do let us know. And uh, we'll be back next week for more gaming news and discussion. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.